How do I start this? Hey you. Hey friends. It's Ben again. Benny's back. Back with a garden tour. <laughs> no, it's a... <laughs> so today I'm going to take you on a garden tour of my quarter acre homestead here in the suburbs of Melbourne where we grow 90% of our fruit and veg. I'm going to show you our setup, what's growing, I'll show you what's in the cellar and then we'll cook something up for lunch straight from the garden. It's an overcast grey winter's day, so not the perfect conditions to show you our homestead. But look, do we have a perfect garden? No. Is it a functional garden? Yes, absolutely. Just over the past four months, we've grown over 300 kilograms of food. And it was only a few years ago that I first started gardening. If you're keen to follow my sustainable living journey, subscribe to this channel. Now let's get into the tour. So this is the main area of our garden where we've got all of our veggie beds. We've got 22 beds that are about 1.2 meters wide by three meters long. It's winter, so we've wrapped up the main part of our growing season, which is over spring, summer and autumn. That's when we grow the most of our food. Uh, and we preserve a lot of it, and we're gonna get to that. We're gonna show you the cellar. But we live in a climate that has a fairly mild winter, and so we can still grow quite a lot of things. And a lot, some of the stuff that we've got in these beds is dying back, like these eggplants here. But we do have a few eggplants left, so we're gonna harvest them. The other things you can see are spring onions here. We've got dill, we've got coriander, and we've also got some capsicums left from summer, so we're gonna harvest them as well. So this is our capsicum patch, which has done really well, been able to produce quite a lot of capsicums. As you can see now, the leaves are dying back. I used to think that these would die over winter, but this plant is now two years old. The thing with capsicum is that they take up quite a long time to produce, so if you plant them in spring, then it's really not till autumn that you get any capsicums. But if you can get them to survive over winter, you get capsicums much earlier in the season because the plant doesn't have to grow. It's already established and then it can start flowering and fruiting straight away. We're gonna go down to the brassicas and I'm gonna talk about how much I hate growing brassicas. <laughs> All right, um, so I've brought you to the brassicas, the cauliflower and the broccoli. Yeah, they're, they're really not my favorite thing to grow. They look nice in the garden at this time of year and there's like not that many other things you can grow at this time of year. I don't know, I've been growing them for three years and I've found that I just haven't had a lot of success. Are you right, mate? I've got broccoli here, I've got cauliflower here. There's actually a nice little cauliflower there. You know, the plant doesn't look that great. It's kind of covered in aphids. If you're watching this and you've got some tips to help me out, let me know. I think I'm getting a little bit better each year. And I think the cabbage that I've got behind me here is doing better than it's done most years. So next to our kohlrabi, we've got lettuces here, which are looking pretty great in my opinion. These are all Coz lettuce and we're gonna harvest one now. <laughs> Look how full our basket's getting. Yeah. We're just getting started. We've already got lettuce. It's pretty good for June. Look at the capsicums. Middle yeah, of June. Yeah, but it's green. Ugh. Well, that's all right. It'll ripen. Yeah. Eggplants. Yeah, we've got about two there. In June. All right, where are we going next? Oh, let's get this fucking big old fennel. <laughs> <laughs> let's say that without the swear word. Yeah. Let's get this big fennel. <laughs> Being a vegetable gardener who also works full time, I find that one thing I try and encourage as much as possible in the garden is volunteer plants. That Rather than volunteer people. <laughs> volunteer people are good too, you know, but I don't, they're pretty far, few and far between, <laughs> including Maddie. Not a lot of volunteering going on there. What I mean by volunteer plants is ones that pop up in the garden by themselves, but you haven't necessarily planted. This fennel is one. This massive fennel actually just regrew from a root. I'm pretty happy with that. Getting a free fennel, basically. There's a grub, which I'll feed to the chickens. Absolutely love that. 
So the other thing that we've got in this bed is potatoes that I've already harvested, but we can harvest some more now. And as you can see, the, the leaves are yellowing, they're starting to die back and that's a good sign that you can start harvesting. I think you could probably wait longer with these, but I want potatoes now. So this is our greenhouse. Being the architect that I am, I obviously had to design it and build it myself. And it works pretty well. There's not a lot going on in there at the moment, but I am gonna sow some onions soon and we'll get them started in trays and then and we'll put them in the greenhouse until they're ready to plant out into the garden. But there's absolutely no action going on. But in there there's no the action moment. in there at the moment. It's a bit embarrassing. It's just full of uh, pots and netting. So now we're gonna keep going further down to the backyard and have a look at our fruit trees, our beehive, and our chickens. So we have a beehive in our backyard, which is awesome. And we have been able to get some honey from that. Are you the beekeeper? I'm not the beekeeper. We are lucky enough to not have to manage the beehive. Our friend Jazz does that. So she comes every, well, in winter, she doesn't come much, I don't think, but during the warmer months, she comes probably every couple of weeks to check on the hive. But yeah, it's great to kind of have that extra element of productivity in our garden without having the extra work. And I guess it's great for pollination as well. It's, uh, it can be a little bit challenging at times having a beehive because when I need to mow around here or fence around here for the chickens, the bees can be a little bit aggressive. I'd sort of look like an idiot running up the backyard. Go like this. Because they, they get, love that they, hair. They get stuck in my hair. They love is, your luscious locks. Yeah. Yeah, they do, they do. So instead of mowing the lawn around the hive myself, I let the chickens do it. So I just get the fencing and I just bring it around here. And this fencing links all the way around up to their main area where their coop is. We um, really try and allow our chickens to free range as much as possible. I talk about that in this video here where we talk all about our backyard chickens and some of the lessons that we've learned. So check that out. We've got multiple trees around us, which we have the great fortune of, I guess, inheriting. We didn't plant any of these trees, but it's really awesome to be able to come into a backyard and have established fruit trees. So this tree here is a plum tree and it's an old tree, but it's still produced quite a lot of plums. This one here is a, a walnut tree, actually. We've got quite a lot of walnuts off of it. And we also got quite a lot of walnuts from a neighboring walnut tree check out our urban foraging video for that. And behind Maddie there, we've got an apricot tree. The one just behind the beehive there is a apple tree. We've got another apple tree. Further up the hill, an avocado tree. This massive tree here is a bay tree. And behind that is a pear tree. These snow peas are looking good. This is our chicken run area, but I'm not gonna talk about that now because we'll be here forever. So let's just go straight to the cellar. This is our cellar. To be honest, this is the area that I get most excited about over winter. The stuff that's in here is the stuff that we've grown over spring, summer and autumn that we get to enjoy over winter. We've got our posada. We grew 70 kilos worth of tomatoes this year. Um, and we made a video about that. So watch this video if you wanna see that. Uh, we grew pumpkins. I don't know how many kilos worth of pumpkins, but probably like 20 of varying sizes, all like butternut squash. And then we've got an assortment of pickles and ketchup. So we pickle cucumbers, zucchinis, onions, uh, green beans, beetroots, and we enjoy eating them as condiments and you know in lots of different things. Maddie's an amazing cook so she finds very creative ways to... I made him say that. Yeah, <laughs> very creative ways to incorporate them into our food. All right, I'm getting hungry. Let's go make some lunch.
How about that lunch? How about that lunch? <laughs> lunch is now dinner. So what have we got here, Maddie? We have a chicken stew with the passata, the capsicum, the eggplant, the fennel we've put in the stew. We've got different herbs that are in season, so parsley. We've used the tops of the fennel and we've also added some green olives. I think except for the chicken and the olives, everything else has come straight from the garden. And then over here we've got a potato salad, mm. which started off as being Ben's basic potato <laughs> salad. <laughs> At which point Manny tasted it and said... It's way too basic. That's awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she made it way better. So this is pretty much like all from the garden. So it's got potatoes, spring onions, dill, and then dill pickles. So cucumber pickles that we'd pickled from earlier this summer. And then just a little side salad of lettuce and dressing. So... Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed our tour and our harvest and cook up. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe if you want more content and we'll see you in the next one. Are you saying that for the audience no. or actually? This is actually really good. <laughs> actually.